we just made the remarkable observation that the entropy is a lower bound on the expected code word length. The entropy H of P is less or equal to L. And in this video, we're going to see that in fact, you can get within one of the entropy. So there is a code for which L is strictly less than the entropy plus one. And this is true for any base B. Now, in fact, since we're actually going to essentially construct a code with this property, and since the optimal symbol code for this P is certainly at least as good as the one we're going to construct in terms of its expected code word length, then in fact, this will give an upper bound on the expected length for an optimal symbol code. So how are we going to construct such a wondrous code with this property? Well, remember when we were proving the lower bound, we found that the optimal L's, the minimizers of this constrained minimization problem, where we considered all lengths satisfying the craft inequality, and we were allowing them to just be real valued, and this was minimizing the expected code word length, we found that the optimal L's, this, these L stars, were log base B, one over PI. And we were assuming here that all the PIs are, are strictly positive. So that this is well, nice and well defined. Okay, so, you know, that's all well and good. Those are the best ones, but we're not guaranteed that this is going to be an integer. And we certainly are going to need integer valued code word lengths if we're actually going to construct a code with those lengths because it's the length of the code word. So you might say, well, you know, okay, we know this is the best, so and we need to make them integers, so let's just round them off, round them off to the nearest integers. So if we rounded them off, then some of them will get smaller and some of them might get bigger. And so if we look at what's going to happen with our craft inequality here, well, we know that it was satisfied strictly, exactly, it was equal to 1 for the L stars, and if we make some of them smaller, then those terms in this sum are going to be getting bigger, and maybe if some of them get bigger, those terms will get smaller. But the ones that are, that are making these terms bigger might cause bad things to happen. So maybe a better plan would be to round all these guys up, and maybe things won't, won't, go, won't get too, maybe our expected code word length won't get too bad. So let's try that. So let's say, let's let li, so we're given some pi's, and now we're going to choose li's to be equal to, we're going to round these things up, log base b1 over pi, rounded up to the nearest integer. So this notation, if you're not familiar with it, this notation, when I write x with these funny little bra half brackets, that's that just means the smallest integer greater or equal to x. So for example, maybe just draw the picture. I think I'm sure you get the idea, but just to visualize here, so we have, let's say k, k plus one, k plus two, these are integers. So I'm just putting all the integers down and maybe our x is, I don't know, maybe it's like here. And then we, when we round up, so that so x this x brackets thing is going to be k plus 1 in that case and on the other hand if we were already at k plus 1 if we were already at an integer then we would just stay there we wouldn't go to k plus 2 okay so i think you get the point and now what can we say about these guys right here well let's let's think about some bounds on this this length well it's certainly greater or equal to we rounded it up, so it's greater or equal to the thing before we rounded, log base b1 over pi. And also, this is going to be strictly less than if we had added 1, log base b1 over pi plus 1. And why is that? Well, when we round up, you know, if we're between two integers, I mean, we're certainly moving less than 1. And if we were at an integer, then we're just going to stay there. We're not going to add a whole one to go to the next guy. So we're always going to be strictly less than, than, than one greater. Okay. So we, now we, 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 were, we wanted to say that we wanted to see if, the, if our new L's, our, our, 
our newly chosen L satisfy the craft inequality. So let's check that. Let's see if in fact craft holds and probably it should from our little intuitive argument there, but let's make that formal. So let's write a big craft inequality here. Sum of one over B to the LIs, we'd like this to be less or equal to one. So let's see, we know that LI is greater or equal to this thing and this is in the denominator so that means that this is going to be less or equal to if we plug in this for li so that is all less or equal to one over b to the log base b one over pi and what do we have here b to the log base b of something is just that something so we have this is all equal to the sum of one over 1 over pi. So this is just pi and the pi's sum to 1 because they are uh, probabilities. And so we have that, in fact, the craft inequality holds for our chosen li's. Very good. So we know that, that therefore, by craft's part of the craft macmillan theorem, there exists a uniquely decodable code with these lengths. And in fact, because you know these are, these are integers now, they're all non-negative integers, and they satisfy the craft inequality, so we know that there exists a uniquely decodable code with those lengths. We can construct it. We actually constructed in, uh, in part B. We, we gave examples of how to construct a prefix code with those lengths, so that's what craft guaranteed us of. So we know there exists such a code, but how good is it? Is it any good? Well, we were that was what we were originally trying to do. We wanted to get, we started out with these L stars and we hoped that by just rounding them up, them up a little bit, we could keep our expected code word length pretty, pretty small. So let's see how good we did. How good is our expected code word length? Well, so here we have Li and we need to multiply by Pi and, and sum up the I's. So since we already have some upper and lower bounds on this, let's just keep them all in place and let's multiply each of these three by PI. PI, uh, by our assumption, is strictly positive. So it's going to preserve all of these inequalities. So we have PI LI strictly less since, since PI is strictly positive. One over PI plus PI. And now we need to get the expected code word length, so we need to sum this up over all the i's. So we would like to say that we'd like to keep all these inequalities in place. We'd like to say that, that if we sum each of these parts up, that we still get, maybe I'll flip these to make it look like our usual thing, that we that these inequalities still hold. So let's write it down and then maybe let's think about for a second to make to see if that's actually true. And then the sum of the PIs is, is 1 here. So I'll just put 1. Now, is this true? Well, we know that for each term in these, these sums that, that the ter this term over here is less or equal to the corresponding term over here. And so, yes, of course, so we can see that, of course, this will hold, right? This is all certainly going to be less because it's less or equal to less or equal term wise and the same thing here strictly less term wise so this is true and what do we have now we have that this is what is this this is just the entropy of p let's make a little space this is the entropy of p the base b entropy and this is of course our expected code word length and once again here we have the entropy of p and its and we add 1 entropy of p plus 1 okay very good so that's what we wanted right that is exactly what we wanted we wanted to show back up here to the top that there was a code which could get within one of the entropy and that is exactly what we did very good so we showed that, that there was a, we actually, if you follow the Kraft part of the Kraft Macmillan theorem, we actually gave a constructive procedure for how to construct 
a code that would that would give you this property get you within one of the optimal the 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 ideal the ideal and so this procedure here when you choose the lengths to be these rounded up ideal lengths so the i'm calling these the ideal lengths when you round those up that procedure or that that method of choosing a code is called Shannon coding. Shannon coding, of course, after Claude Shannon. So that's excellent. And now we, so we started out saying the title of the video was bounds on the optimal expected length. And so let's do that. I think you, I already mentioned how we're going to do it. So you can probably guess what's going to happen. So let's say that L optimal is the expected code word length of an optimal symbol code for this source for this uh, probability probabilities p you know take over all the possible symbol codes for these p's choose one which has a minimal expected code word length and since that's optimal we know that it's certainly less or equal to the 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 expected code word length for the code that we define maybe we'll we'll call that Shannon L Shannon and this is less than the entropy plus one and this guy over here L optimal since we know that the entropy is a lower bound on any on the expected code word length of any symbol code then in fact this is greater or equal to the entropy and so th we see that in fact the same set of inequalities holds for the expected code word length of an optimal symbol code. And in fact, we'll see in a little bit that you can construct, there's a procedure for constructing, a very simple procedure for constructing an optimal symbol code, and that's called Huffman coding. It's amazing that it's this very, very straightforward, very simple procedure that will actually give you an optimal symbol code for any given finitely, you know, P over some finitely many variables, finitely many source symbols. Okay, so we proved these these lower and upper bounds, and you might say, hey, you know, that that looks pretty good within within one, like you know, when B is B is two, this is within one bit of the optimal. So you might say, hey, not too shabby. But in fact, you know, this is this this is up to one bit for every source symbol. So when you have a really long file or you know your message is very long, then those those can add up. Those can add up quite a bit, especially when the entropy of your source is not very large, when the entropy of each symbol is not very large. So in fact, this is not you know not necessarily very, you know, that great. And um, so next we're going to see that in fact, using block coding, you can theoretically get within you can get arbitrarily close to the entropy using blocks but later but block coding is is not computationally very efficient it can be very inefficient actually and later we'll see that that a, a better approach than block coding is actually using stream codes and and arithmetic coding is a beautiful way to do that but block coding is the easiest to understand and we will immediately get it from this result and that will give us the famous source coding theorem so we're going to do that do that next <laughs>